Hey guys, so I've just finished up recording a live training for a mastermind group where I dive into the seven proven fitness marketing strategies that are gonna help you with your Facebook ads. In this video, I dive into the mindset behind having profitable and successful Facebook ads. So it is a live video, a little bit of a different format than you're probably used to, but I hope you enjoy it. So let's dive straight in. Let's dive in. I'm going to share my screen. And we're going to dive into, like I said, so hopefully you guys can see this. If you need me to zoom in or anything, uh, I can do. Let's just see if I can zoom this in. Okay. That should be zoomed in now. Let's see. Yeah, I think you guys can see that. So Facebook advertising mindset and expectations. Like I said, before all the learning and the implementation, we really want to just get our mindset right with it. And what we're going to, what, how, well, how, what do we expect to get from Facebook ads? And this is really key because the, the mindset is major when approaching, approaching Facebook ads. And the first key point I want to kind of touch on is Facebook ads are not your savior. They're not a quick fix. And I see so many people out there and so many coaches talk about like, just get to Facebook ads. You need to do Facebook ads. Like that will, that will rocket your business. That will scale your business. And that isn't true. And the reason that's not true is because in Rise Up, we're all about building those solid foundations to your business. And Facebook ads are like the fuel to the fire. So if you don't have the fire, you're not going to put fuel on it yet. There's no point. And that's where a lot of um, mistakes happen. We spend a lot of money on Facebook ads, but we're not ready for paid traffic. We're not ready for these leads. But like you just mentioned, 40 new group members uh, in your group is a new group. So why would we then go and run traffic to that straight away? We want to grow that group organically. We want to make sure that um, Everything's in place. So we've got our group in place. We understand our market. We understand our niche. We've taken on some clients. We've we've done our sales calls. We've built out you know, our beta program and we're testing that because this all builds confidence and the foundations to your business. We don't want to then add complexity to that by running paid traffic because as I'm sure a lot of people that have, have gone through the training, uh, I tried to keep it as simple as possible, but there are elements to pay traffic that can get a little bit complicated. It's a new skill and we don't wanna start that and add it to your business before you're ready. So just to recap on this one, they're not your savior and they're not your quick fix. They're an amazing scaling tool once you have all the foundations in place in your business. So Kathy's just put, Jeff Powell made 35K without any ads. Jeff, you're an, uh, are you even running ads yet? I actually don't think he is. So uh, that's a really good example, Kathy. And thank you for putting that in. Jeff doesn't need to go to ads yet. And he might not be ready for ads yet because he's building his business organically and it's working. Again, we're not trying to add complexity because something's broken. We add the pay traffic because we want to scale a little bit quicker. And for Jeff, he spent so much time um, dialing in his niche, working on his program, working on his offer, working on his delivery to his clients. He's so confident on his sales calls because he's so confident with getting the results. And this is when paid traffic, if Jeff ran paid traffic, he could probably really scale his business even more, but he doesn't need to right now. So he's not looking for a savior and he's not looking for a quick fix. And that's really the key. We're, we're coming, we're not coming to Facebook ads with desperation. We're coming to Facebook ads saying, okay, I've got everything in place in my business. And then now I can move to paid traffic. Okay. So the second point I want to hit home on is we're going back to school when it comes to Facebook ads. This is a learning phase and you need to take your time and be patient. And the reason I say that is because it's a new skill, right? When you first go into ads manager and probably when you first look at my training, you're probably like, whoa, my head's blown. I don't, I don't know where to start. How do I do the funnel? How do I do the ads or the setup? I know because I've been there. When I first looked in Ads Manager, it was the old style Ads Manager, and it was so complicated. I was like, I don't even know where to start. All this data, all these metrics, that gets easier because we're learning, and it's not, you're not going to learn it overnight. We want to take your time, go through the, the curriculum. So module 14 and 15, take your time. You don't want to do it in one day. Let's not rush it and make any mistakes. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. We want to set our pace, hit, hit those... Um, hit those modules, hit those trainings each day and just work through it slowly. And that's how you're going to take it in. That's how you're going to learn. We're not trying to sprint to the finish line just to get ads launched, just to launch ads. We want to just really learn it and really learn it for the, for the future because this isn't just not a one-time thing. You're going to be going back in there. You're going to be looking at optimizing and really 
this is a tool for life. Like Facebook ads has been around for maybe 10. Well, Facebook started in what, 2007? I think they launched their ads process two, three years afterwards. So it's been around for at least 10 years and it's still the most powerful tool out there for marketing. And it's getting better and better and better. A lot of people say like there's YouTube ads, there's these ads, there's these ads, but Facebook is hands down for the fitness industry, the best platform to run ads on. And it's not going anywhere. So we want to really learn and take that skill set and use it in our business in the future. So just to recap on this one, we're going back to school, be prepared to make notes, prepare to watch the videos back in again, and don't get frustrated if you don't understand it. It isn't super simple. It can sometimes um, get a little bit complicated in terms of the setup, but just, yeah, take your time, watch the videos and be patient with the process. And I, I assure you by the end of it, when you click launch and you launch your first campaign and you start seeing those leads come in and you start seeing your group grow, you'll be like, wow, you'll have a, a sense of fulfillment and, and you'll be proud of yourself because it isn't, not every, not every coach does this. Not every coach takes the time to learn this. So yeah. I'll, I'll leave that all on there. But like I said, it's a learning phase. Take your time and be patient. Okay. So the next point I want to talk about is we really want to have the right expectations because you're not going to figure it all out. That should say out, not our. You're not going to figure it all out immediately. And you're not going to launch a crazy return on investment campaign from day one. Because there's very there's a lot of variables to Facebook ads. There's there's a lot of things we've got to plug in and we've got to tell Facebook what we want. And sometimes Facebook doesn't give us what we want. And I'm going to dive into this a little bit deeper on another point that I'll, I'll, I'll talk about shortly. But again, when we're, we're in this community in Rise Up, there's, there's lots of different coaches in here. And I know it's already happened because I've seen it. A lot of coaches will say, oh, Beate, she's getting sub dollar leads. Or how do I, how do I get 200 group members a week. I've seen um, Clarice is getting 200, Angela's getting 150. That's because they've they've been running it for a long time and it's dialed in, it's optimized. And you're not gonna figure all that out and you're not gonna launch that crazy campaign from day one. Now, sometimes caveat here, it does happen. We've seen coaches just take the Facebook ads, their niche is dialed in, they've got really good creative, the ads are really good and it, and it works really well. But I want you to have the expectations that it's, it's testing. We're just going to launch and then we're going to see what happens and we're going to optimize week on week. It's not going to take a lot of time. Once you've launched, it's not going to take a lot of time to, to really optimize it in terms of your time, but it might take some time in terms of length. So it might take two weeks. It might take four weeks. It might take two months, but that's all a learning process for you. You're getting that feedback from Facebook and you're kind of coming to these calls and you're learning about how we can optimize, how we can tweak to get better cost per lead and grow your group. When I talk about return on investment, I'm talking about how much it's costing us to, to, to invest in Facebook ads. So let's say you spend $20 a day. So in a month, what's that making me do maths live on the call? So $20 a day is $600 a month. Now, if you're spending $600 a month, are you getting one client back or are you getting two clients back or are you getting three clients back? Now in the first month, that might not happen. But what's happening is we're driving that traffic to a group and then we're, we're nurturing those people. So a client, uh, a prospect that might come in on day one might not buy from you for 60 days or 90 days or even a year, but eventually they may see something. They may see a post, they may see a live, they may see a podcast, and then they might buy from you. And that's where the ROI will occur. So it's not just sometimes, okay, day one, am I going to make sales? It's, am I building that community? I'm investing in Facebook ads to get that return in the future. So that's when I'm talking about ROI. We're not launching straight away and going, wow, I'm at 10K, I'm at 15K, I'm at 20K. We're building that community to really get that return on investment in the future. Let's just have a quick look at the comments. So let me know in the comments, guys, if you're if this is useful, if you're enjoying this, if this makes sense, is this making you think about your mindset? And even if you're running traffic now, like what's your mindset? So drop anything in the comments for me. I'd love to get some feedback and hear from you guys. Uh, love this kind of call to be interactive, not just always me talking to you. So yeah, let's see some comments. Okay, fourth point. And one of my favorite phrases, and I, I was told this by a mentor very early on when I started doing Facebook ads was data over emotion. And when he first said it, I was like, okay, interesting. 
and it didn't quite sit with me. And over the years, I've I've never forgotten it. Obviously, it's three words, but um, it's always stuck with me. And it and it so it rings so much more true now to me because Facebook ads can get very emotional. You want them to work. You invested all that time in the training. You you you're learning, and you you want it's your business, right? Your it's your baby, and you really want it to work. And what sometimes happens is you launch your campaign and it just bombs, it doesn't work. And you're pulling your hair out and you're sending support requests in and you're saying, Dave, this is not working. Can you help me? That's fine, but we do not want to get emotional about it because Facebook ads is science, is data and numbers. There's part art to it. So the art, I've taken a lot of the art away from it for you guys. I've given you templates. I've given you the ad copy. I've given you the how to run the creative. I've given you the, the framework to build the ads. That's the art. But the science is about the results. It's about the data. It's about what is Facebook giving us back that we can take that data and analyze it and then really look at how we improve on that. So again, we do not want to get emotional. Let's try and not get attached. Obviously, we're all emotional human beings, but do not get attached to it and do not get you know, disheartened when maybe something isn't quite working or something breaks or something doesn't quite go your way. That's fine. Let's review the data use me, come on to the support calls, submit tickets, and I'll help you through it. Okay, so James says, yes, great stuff to understand about ads. Before I came to OTF, I tried Facebook ads, but didn't really know what I was doing. Yeah, I see this all the time, James, and I think like, we see other coaches run ads. We, we obviously, there's so many different coaches out there will tell you to run ads. And we want to try it, right? And I like that trial and error. I like that you've gone in there, James, and, and tried it. But again, it's not sometimes the best tool to use in your business. You can probably see now that, you know, in the Rise Up dashboard, we've got all this curriculum that's gonna help you build real solid foundations for your business. And then in the future, you can come to Facebook ads and hopefully learn it from myself and, and implement it the right way. Okay, so number five is understand it's a processing, it's a process and testing is the name of the game. So quite linked, to the, the last point or the earlier point about, um, let me just drive, go up to it. Um, yeah, so it's linked to this point where we're talking about, we're not gonna figure it out all immediate, immediately. It's a process. So the first process is we're gonna watch the videos, we're gonna learn, and we're gonna build out everything that we need to run Facebook ads. And then once we've launched, we're going to get that data back. We're going to review the data and then we're going to test. And that's really the difference between someone that's good at Facebook ads and someone that isn't is they launch one campaign and one ad and then they leave it and they go, oh, I'm not getting the results. Does this even work? Well, that's because think about how many other people that are running ads. There's 3 billion active users on Facebook, but think about how many marketers are running ads and how many people are spending. And I talk about this a lot, but Facebook ads is a marketplace. It's an auction place. So how do we get placed on people's feeds and people's groups and people's phones is we're bidding for that attention. We're bidding for that real estate, that screen real estate, and we're paying for it. So when we talk about um, like the, the metrics and we talk about like CPM, so cost per thousand impressions, that's how much we're paying for those placements on people's screens. Now, if you're just running one ad and it's not working, then we've not tested anything. We've not tried. We've not told Facebook like, okay, I've got this ad and this ad. Which one do you prefer? I've got this audience and this audience. Which one do you think is going to work better? And Facebook's going to tell you directly. It's going to give you the data and it's going to say to you, okay, Dave, this audience is really working for you. You're getting a really good cost per lead. You're going to review that data and then you can turn the other one off. And that's why we test. And that's why when we first launch, we're running one campaign with three ad sets. So in the ad sets, we've, we've got our audiences. So we've got one audience, two audience, three audience. And then inside there, we've got two to three ads. So we should have nine ads running in total. Now, all those ads are the same, but that's part of the testing process. So we're not just running one audience, one ad. We've got three audiences, three audiences, nine ads. And that is really, um, if you could take anything from this call, this is the testing. This is how Facebook ads work. We keep testing. And once we've found a winning ad combo, we then analyze that winning ad combo and we say, okay, how can I test something else? How can I change this slightly? Okay, this one's got an orange background and it's working well. Maybe I'll try a blue background or a red background. And we just test. And I'm gonna talk about a little bit of testing in a minute, but just wanted to kind of hit home on that. 
Understand it's a process and testing is the name of the game. Okay, let's just dive into some uh, some comments. Uh, rise up mantra from Kathy. She said, there are no emergencies. No, nope. we always want to stay calm, cool, collected, and we just want to process everything and, and manage that. And that's what we're all here for. All the Rise Up coaches are here to help you through and troubleshoot and really help you come through, rise up, and build the businesses that you all want to build. So uh, Andrea said, I can't see myself ever being ready for ads. Interesting, Andrea, and, and elaborate on that for me. I'd be really interested to hear what's your mindset behind never being ready, because we can work on that. We can look at, okay, well, what what do you, what are your expectations of being ready? And again, we've set those in Rise Up. We obviously want the foundations, but let's work on that. And let's, let's talk about that openly on this call um, to see, okay, is there any other people that don't think they're going to be ready for ads? Because I guarantee at some point you will be ready. You'll, you'll, you'll get to the point in your business and you'll go, okay, now's the time i need more traffic i need more people in my group and i've got everything in place i'm confident on my sales calls i'm confident with my program and i'm ready for paid traffic so uh, andrea I'd, I'd love it if you didn't mind drop drop and elaborate in the comments for me and i'd love to kind of talk to you about that on this call okay so kathy replied um and then andrea said uh oh, we'll see okay so andrea yeah drop a comment and let's uh let's kind of dive into that if you would like to okay so I'm just gonna take a quick drink because I'm doing a lot of talking here. Number six, you should already have a strong organic process and you should continue to do this. And I'm gonna bold continue because I think what happens when you get to ads, sometimes we'll probably take the foot off the gas a little bit. And I understand because again, I talk about this a lot, but as coaches, you wear a lot of hats in your business. Most of you are the, the sole person in your business and you're the coach, the salesperson, the organic marketer, the paid traffic marketer, the admin assistant, the accountant, you do everything. So when you get to paid traffic and you've done the hard work, you've launched your campaign and it's starting to work, we tend to say, oh, well, ads are working now, so maybe I don't need to do so much outreach or do so much organic. And what I want to encourage you is, is that's not the right mindset and expectations because organic plays into the paid side of things everything on facebook is linked your facebook profile is linked to your ads manager which is linked to your business page which is list, list, uh, linked to your uh, business manager everything is in linked right so if you're very active on Facebook and you're posting a lot and you're getting comments and likes organically and your group, by the way, your group is linked to everything. They know who you are. They know what's going on in your group. They know they see everything. So the organic can help your ads get better and better because like, okay, this person isn't just trying to like smash and grab with ads, just throw money and, and, and take all these people. They're, they're invested in Facebook. They're on Facebook, they're adding value and they're providing to the whole Facebook experience because Facebook is really looking to make sure that the user experience on there is the best. They obviously run ads because it's the it's the revenue for their business. It's where they make probably a lot of their revenue. But at the same time, they're protecting their users because without the users, there's no marketers. There's no ads. We can't market to anyone, right? So they're always looking to do this. So again, if you can continue to make that experience better for your, your group members and your friends on Facebook, then you're going to be rewarded. And this is where a lot of people will say, and you'll hear me say this a lot, you may get picked up on the Facebook algorithm. And again, we speak about this algorithm and it's like this famous thing, but it's true. It's if you're having a strong organic process and you're driving traffic to your group, you'll get picked up and you'll start getting placed in places. So an example recently, you may have seen Laurie. Laurie's not even running ads anymore and she's on the algorithm train and it, 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 keep, it just keeps going. She can't get off it. It's, she's getting 100, 150 group requests a day because Facebook has rewarded her for running Facebook ads and then said, okay, Laurie, you're now, you've got a very good group. You've got very good content you're providing and now they're recommending her group to so many people on Facebook. And I've seen this time and time again. Angela has it, Clarice has had it, you know, Beate's had it. We'll, we'll, you'll get picked up. So just to recap, you should already have a strong organic process. And this is what we teach in Rise Up. So if you're not here yet, you'll learn the organic process. You'll learn 
what needs to be done in your business to make sure that you're building your group group organically. We're not paying for it. We're, we're investing our time on Facebook and building that organic process. And as you run ads, you should continue to do this. And as you run ads and your business grows, yes, you might be able to bring someone in to help you do it. Bring someone in to help you do your messaging, bring someone in to help you do your posting and, and editing and things like that. But I want to encourage you, and I, I can't say this strongly enough, is always continue to do this. You can't just flip Facebook ads on and sit back and say, right, this is automated, this is easy, my group's growing, I don't need to do anything else. We have to continue that organic process. Okay, so Andrew's come back to me, so I'd love to just dive into this and then I'll jump on to the next point. So uh, Andrew said, well, I don't have the foundation at all. I'm literally at square zero, so I can't see that far down the line um, or even being that successful, if I'm honest. Realizing that sounds a bit pathetic, but it's where I am right now. I haven't been able to start the crypting yet, so I'm sure I'll get there. So uh, thank you for sharing that, first of all, Andrew. That's like really, really good to kind of uh, vocalize that. And let's dive into that a little bit. So you're at square zero, right? And let's just say that you're at square, maybe square one. We don't start at zero. You're an online coach. You you clearly, um, you know, good at what you do and know what you do and you're investing in yourself. So you're not at square zero. But what I would say is we don't need to think too far advanced for Facebook ads. All we need to do is let's just set some targets and, and start going through the curriculum. And like I mentioned before, it's not a case of coming to, to, to Monday and watching every single video. Start with two or three or even one video a day, and let's just start chipping away through them. Um, but let's not think about the Facebook ads process for now. Um, and what I'd say for you, Andrea, was a prime example of maybe, obviously it's great that you're here because we're talking about this, but maybe you don't need to be watching the paid traffic modules because that's not helping your mindset. You're seeing and hearing me talk about this and you're thinking, I'm not here, I'm not ready yet, but you will be ready at some point. So maybe let's um, spend this time starting to do the modules and start building those foundations in your business. And then when you're ready for paid traffic, you can come to these calls. So I would invest your time in the curriculum, work your way through it. Don't look too far into the future. Let's just concentrate on ticking and going through each module and building that business and building the foundations in your business. So hopefully that helps. Um, obviously reach out to the coaches as well. Reach out to Nate, Lucy, Dave, Alex, and let's, we can all help you with that mindset and help you grow uh, your online fitness business. Okay, so the final point um, is how to optimize and improve your campaign. And obviously you've launched and you may be starting to get some data and we're seeing things. And really there's three things that I always talk about and what I'm always looking at. And I think the the first thing that everyone goes to first and everyone wants is the cost. Everyone's like, I want cheap leads, I want sub dollar. Uh, you know, I've seen this person rise up getting it. And I want to just make sure that that's not the only thing that you're concentrating on. Because I've said this before and I'll say it time and time again, we could get sub dollar leads, but they couldn't, they might, they're not in our niche. So let's say I've got, uh, I'm a dad, which I'm not. I've just become an uncle, but I'm not a dad. Um, so I'm a dad and I'm running, and this is quite uh, obviously extreme, but I'm running and I'm getting sub dollar leads, but loads of women are coming into my group. How, how could I ever sell to them? How could I ever deliver the service that I want to deliver to them if they're, they're moms, they're not dads? And that's really the point here. We always want to look at quality first. I would happily pay 10, 15, $20 for a lead if they were gonna be guaranteed paying client versus paying one dollar for 100 leads but none of them become clients so that's really the key before we look at anything i want you to look at quality quality is the first point that we're looking at are they the right leads for your business and are they um let me just pull this in okay so the first one i want to look at is quality are they the right leads for your business are they the right leads for your group and is the quality there? So how do we look at quality? So when someone comes into your group, first thing you'll see is their questions, right? So are they answering your questions? Like, is it, you can you can always tell how the grammar looks, like have they answered how you wanted to answer? Or are they just put like, no, yes, no. Like, are they invested actually wanting to join this group? Or are they just doing it off a whim because they're studying the coffee shop and they're bored? Then we look at their profile. Do they look like a lead or a prospect that's in your niche? So if it's a dad, do they have their kids on their profile? Do they look like the right age range? Do they have a nice profile photo? Are they active on Facebook? 
we can really start to build a picture on quality from that. And then do they interact in your group? Do they engage? Are they showing up to uh, podcasts? Are they, are they commenting on any posts? That's how we see quality. And over time, you'll start to kind of build that picture. So that's how we see quality. It's not just like um, one thing. It's like overall, how are they? How is that lead in your group? The next thing I want you to look at, it's probably, these are probably 2.1 and 2.2. So they're kind of on par. And really what we're looking at now is volume and cost. So we'll probably look at cost first because we don't want to get a load of volume at a high cost. We probably prefer to have a lower cost with very, very good quality and then crank the volume. So how much is it costing you to get a lead? And when I say lead, it's someone that opts in and gives their name, email to your funnel. So how much is that costing you? Then from there, we obviously, if we're using the Rise Up Business Builder, which everyone should be doing when they run traffic, because I want to see the amount of group members and the amount you're spending on Facebook ads. And we want to see that cost per group member. So we want to know how much is it costing us for a lead? So someone that opts into our funnel and then how much is it costing us per group member? And then from there, if we know that, so let's say it's costing us $3 per group member, then we can look at the volume. Okay. Well, how many am I getting a day? And I'm going to swap that round. Actually, I think as I speak out loud, it's cost first. So that's two. And then we look at volume because what we can do with volume is we reverse engineer it. Like I said before, we're looking at data. So when we're looking at data, we can say, okay, well, we've got the quality. We've ticked that box. I'm happy with these leads. The cost is where I want it to be. So it's at $3 per, uh, per group member. Now, how do I get the volume? Well, how you get the volume is you just increase the ad spend. So let's say you're spending, uh, let's say you're spending $30 a day and it's costing you $3. Uh, a group member, then that's cost. That's um, sorry. Let me start again. So you're spending thirty dollars a day, and you're getting uh, group members for three dollars. So that's getting you're getting ten group members a day. But if you want twenty group members, then you need to spend sixty dollars. If you want um, thirty group members, you need to spend ninety dollars. We can reverse engineer it because Facebook usually we'll give you that data and we'll put $1 in and we'll get $5 back. So we can see how we can reverse engineer that um, to get those group members. We can see the cost of the group member and then we can understand the volume. So let me know if that makes sense. We're looking at quality first. I really want you to um, understand that we're looking for quality over quantity. I would rather you have 10 really, really high dialed in niche prospects versus 100 just way out your niche. Then we look at the cost. How much is it costing us per group member? And then we can look at the volume and how much uh, is it costing us to get obviously those group members and how many do we want a day? So that's that covered. The next thing is, okay, so your campaign is up and running and you want to test. And I get a lot of questions of like, well, what should I test first? And the thing that I always say is, if you found some really good audiences, then you're fine. If you've got three ad sets running, and those the three different audiences are all doing amazing, then that's okay. I would, I would, I would, wouldn't test any more audiences. You don't need any more. If they're between one, two, three, five million, you've got, you know, the best part of 10 million to 15 million people. Now we're not going to get in front of all those people, but that's a good amount of audiences. Three audiences is good. But if you haven't got kind of two or three amazing audiences, then let's test the audiences because we should have a winning ad and we can put that winning ad against a new audience and see if we can find a different pocket of Facebook that's gonna work. So again, the an easy win with Facebook ads is testing audiences first. And this is where we always really start. The next thing is if you've got those audiences and you've been running ads for a little bit, like a, a while, test some new creative. Like every week, just put a new ad in, keep the copy the same, keep the audience the same, keep the headline, everything stays the same, but you change the creative. When we market, we only change one variable at a time. So what's that one variable? That one variable is the creative. So we'll always change one thing at a time. Now, if you, again, you find another winning variable, you can keep testing. And like I said earlier, testing is the name of the game. And this is how I've become successful at Facebook ads because I'm constantly testing. I'm testing audiences first, then I'm testing creative. And then I'm going to move on to the next one where maybe let's test some headlines. So again, the headline is the, the first thing that comes up. So I'll just show you, um, so I'm in, I'm in Gina's account. I'm sure she won't mind because she's coming on shortly to look at it. Let's just look at a headline. 
So the headline is here, the free group hormone balance and weight loss. So we, the third thing we can test is headlines, because again, this is bold. The way that someone reviews a Facebook ad is the first thing they do is they see the creative. The second thing they see is the headline, and then they read the top three lines. So we can see here, we'll go, oh, wow, that's a nice, that's a nice photo. I wonder where, where Gina is. Oh, I wonder what this ad's about. Oh, it's a free group for hormone balance and weight loss. Oh, that's interesting. And then you read the top line. You're like, ladies, you want to manage their hormones. My free Facebook. Okay, interesting. This is the key point. Then they click see more. This is when we've got them hooked. Now they're now in, they're now invested in reading this copy and then they'll go, I'm really interested in this. And then they'll click the link. So again, just to recap that we've got the first thing people see on Facebook ads is the creative. The second is what they see in the headline. And then they read the top three lines and then they click see more. That is the process of how people see ads and how people go through the process of getting to your group. So that would be what I would test third. I would change some headlines and I would test the your winning ad. So you take your best ad that you've got, you keep the creative the same, you keep the copy the same, you keep the audience the same, but you change, say you've got three ads, you just change the headline on all three ads. So you'll have three ads with the same image, the same copy, the same audience, it's going to the same audience, but the headlines are different. So you're testing that one variable, which is three different headlines. The next test, and the final really test is copy. So again, when you run an ad, like, and, and for a lot of you guys in Rise Up, you've, you're just running the same copy. You've got one ad with one copy. You've, yes, you've changed the creative, but let's change the creative. So I've given you a very simple framework, which is very, um, it's, a, it's not a story-based framework. It's very like structured. So maybe write a story. So again, a lot of you guys are your niches. So write a story about what you've been through. So for Gina, maybe um, she's gone through a journey about hormone imbalance and she can talk about that journey openly. And when you talk about yourself in the in like the first person um, storytelling view, you can get away with writing it on Facebook because you're not pointing anyone, you're not, you're not gonna point anyone out or call anyone out. You're talking about yourself and you're allowed to do that. So that can be really good because storytelling sells. Storytelling is uh, interesting and will grab the attention. So again, look at your copy and maybe change your copy to a story and that can be a really good test and again that's the one variable so you take your winning ad you keep the audience the same the creative the same the headline the same and all you change is the copy and then what do you do next and this is just a rinse repeat process this never stops and for you guys this probably sounds like a lot of work but it actually isn't because when you're running $20, $30 a day, you don't have to do all this. You can set up a campaign and it can work. But as you scale and as you do more and you want to improve your ads, if you have time and you're interested in it, then spend some time doing this. So it's not just a case of coming to your ads and reviewing them every day. Like if you think, okay, today my ads are doing well, but I've got a spare hour, maybe search some new audiences, maybe take some new creative, maybe do some research of ads that you've seen and you could get um, some inspiration from. Maybe look at some headlines. Again, this is a really key point is you don't have to reinvent the wheel. You can go and look on your Facebook profile and scroll through and look at other ads, take inspiration from other ads and apply them to yours. Now, caveat, don't directly copy anyone's ads because it won't work because it's their ads and it might not even be working for them. You don't know. But what you can do is if you like it, and this is the key, if that ad's got comments on it and likes on it and shares on it, it's a good ad, it's working. So if it's a really good ad and it's got 100 comments, 300 comments, loads of shares, then something's working in that ad. So take a look at it and pull out a key part of it and then potentially use that in your campaign. So that's a rinse repeat. But again, you don't have to do all this if you're just spending $20, $30. To give you some context, we spend upwards of 700 to over $1,000 a day in the OTF with ad spend. So we're running multiple ads, probably 50 to 60 different ads at one time to 10, 20, 30 different audiences at one time. So that's the scale that we're at. But for you guys, if you're just starting out, you don't have to do all of this, but this is just how you can optimize, improve your campaigns in the future. And the final thing I wanna to touch on is uh, on top of all this, you can always be split testing your landing page. So I've shown you in previous ones. And if you want to see that video on how to split test landing page, just put split test in the comments and I'll tag you on that training. But we always want to split test 
to that landing page. So we want to create two variables. And if you're doing any of these tests, you can always split test your landing page. It doesn't matter because ClickFunnels will do it for you. So again, we only want to do one variable at a time, but that's just on your Facebook ads. With the funnel, we can do one variable on the funnel. So we might change the headline on the funnel and we can split test that against the, the original. So you can split test and do tests in ads at the same time. So that's everything I have for you guys. I'm going to check the comments. If anyone else has got any comments or you want me to elaborate on anything, please drop it in the comments and I will do so. So if you're serious about scaling your online fitness business to the next level, the next thing you're going to want to do is check out the video I've got linked up here on when to hire a fitness marketing agency. In this video, I talk about when to hire a fitness marketing agency for your business and also to look out for all the pitfalls and things that could potentially go wrong. So make sure to check that out and I'll see you in the next video.